So in an era of digital transformation, how we are working is changing rapidly. And this is specifically with how we are managing uh, our content and collaborating on our files. People are creating more content, much more than before. And while they are doing so, they are using multiple devices. Uh, in, uh, along with just creating of content, they are even sharing it, not only with people within their organization, but also with folks outside their organization. In fact, Gartner predicts that by 2022, 50% of the organizations will be using a document collaboration tool as the standard method for interaction when it comes to document creation. And while we are creating so much of cont co uh, content, we have access to a vast wealth of information. Yet, we find ourselves spending a lot of time looking for content and kind of reinventing the wheel. And while all of these productivity issues uh, do exist, the bigger issue is of uh, loss of data, data leakage, and the fact that we are still subjected to malicious attacks and accidental deletes. So how does OneDrive fit in? Oops, sorry. OneDrive is your files app. And with OneDrive, you can not only create and view your documents, but you can also collaborate on them, share them internally and externally, and do all of this from any device, anywhere, while you're traveling, while you're at office, from PC, laptop, Mac, uh, mobile devices, and tablet. OneDrive also helps you to organize your files, add metadata to your content, and find the files that matter most to you. And with all of this, OneDrive, with the power of Microsoft 365, helps you keep your files updated, protected, secured, and backed up. So to set up context of uh, the journey of adoption, we thought we'll spend a quick minute on the deployment journey as well. Um, all the content across these five stages are available on docs.microsoft. Uh, whether it is how to plan, how to plan your data migration and actually do the data migration, to deploying OneDrive Sync client, deploying a known folder move, figuring out user engagement, or making sure that the operation of the app is perfect. But what I want to highlight here is the first part, which is the planning part, and the third question as to how you will drive end user adoption. Why this is important is that we have a lot of clients who come to us saying that, okay, now we have deployed OneDrive, please help us with the user adoption. That is not the stage where you begin planning user adoption. You begin planning user adoption in parallel to when you start planning your deployment, which is why this slide for us was a very critical slide to begin the conversation with. And do visit docs.microsoft.com to learn more about the deployment resources. So the key learnings of adoption, uh, before moving on to how and what we need to do, I'll spend a quick minute talking about change. Change is inevitable and it is scary, but and with change comes resistance, and it's a human nature, and it's same with technology. In fact, the CIO board of executives ran a survey and they got to know that only 34% of the users are willing to adopt a new system when it is rolled out. Now, this is not a OneDrive specific data point, it's an overall technology data point. But what we have discovered is that if you have planned your adoption much in advance and you do not ignore the people side of change management, this number can go up. It won't be that scary and it won't be that difficult. It would be easy, seamless, and um, much easier to handle. So with the interactions that we've had with our customers and all the adoption uh, experiences that we have, there are a few things that we've noticed that we should not do to make sure that we have a successful adoption. And these are the five things that if we do, we fail our stakeholders. So we need to stay away from it. I'll double click into all these uh, five reasons. 
So the first thing is not articulating the need for a change. Now, we do not want to surprise our end users. They need to know what change is coming. And for that, we need to make sure that we have a communication plan. A communication plan that starts along with when we start the deployment, as I mentioned before, so that they have enough time to be comfortable with what they are going to use. We worked with a multinational company uh, a few years back who was moving from file share and home drives. And they had to roll out early January. But they began their, I mean, their official launch was early January. But they began their communication much in advance, some six months in advance. They set up labs, they had training videos, uh, they had workshops. And for a couple of months towards the end, they even had both the applications. So OneDrive was there, and even the access to file shares. Both were available to the end users. So that end users could play with OneDrive, be comfortable, understand the differences that uh, is in between what they're using right now and what they'll be using after some time. Knowing that come January, they will not have access to file share. So they need to be aware of what the change is. And for that, we need to have a set of communications for which we need to understand that we have a variety of audience. Uh, and to reach the maximum audience, we need to make sure that we use different channels and a mix of channels. It can be a Yammer group, it can be a Teams channel, it can be emails, it can also be flyers and handouts within your corridors of your office. But while you're doing that, make sure that you do not overwhelm the end users with communications. Be flexible, be ready to ramp up or ramp down as and when needed. To do that, you need to understand the change curve. There might be end users who are far ahead in the change curve, ready to adapt technology, uh, millennials who are extremely tech savvy, while there may be some who are not that uh, happy with the change. Legacy users are very happy with how things are and will create issues when you want to actually drive the change. So be aware of the user profiles and plan your communication and adoption journey accordingly. The next is having a clear vision. So there are two types of vision which we expect our customers to have. One is the business side and one is the people side. But what is common between these two vision is the, com is the question, what does success look like? You need to be very clear about the answer to this question. You need to have quantifiable business metrics that define the outcome that you want to drive, because I'm pretty sure your superiors would want to know what is the outcome you want to drive. It can be an amount of active usage that you're looking at, data retention, um, external sharing, collaboration that you want to drive, anything. But you need to be sure of the outcome and the business metric, and it needs to be quantifiable. But that's the business side. There's also an end user side which we cannot ignore. Your end users do not care about the business metrics you need to drive. They do not care how much retention you want to do. They do not care about the active usage. What do they care about? A tool, a tool that works, let them, let, gets them to do their work so that they can go home and rest in peace. For that, they need to know what you are enabling them to do how they are being helped with OneDrive or any tool of M365 that you are deploying. What is in it for them and what advantage do they gain? So be clear of the vision. The next thing is giving employees enough uh, tools and capacity to change. Again, having a sense of how, what uh, the profile of your audience is. You can have a mix of communication, and this communication can be from newsletters to flyers, uh, to training videos, to whatever you seem is beneficial for them. So again, if there are users that want white papers, we should have white papers for them. If there are millennials who want snackable videos and YouTube videos to just see and understand how they use the product and not read much, then you need to have the videos. And similarly, recognize the effective change that you would drive along with it. Uh, during the course of the event, Matt is going to show you a template of an action plan that we recommend to our end users, uh, to our customers. And with that action plan, you will be actually able to answer all of this. What you'd want to drive, 
who is accountable, by when, what the timeline is that you want to drive the outcome, and all the communication plan that you need. So the, uh, I think we missed uh, the final po point, which is over-focusing on technology. So you and I love technology. We are spending an evening in Vegas talking about technology, so that's pretty evident. But our end users might not really n know or want to know much about technology. They don't care about the security aspect or the compliance aspect. So what they care about, how you solve their problems. And I'll give you a customer example, that a uh, customer that I worked with last year, cannot name for obvious reasons, but it's a multinational company, 50,000 users all across the globe, uh, five to six different subsidiaries. Uh, one of the subsidiaries got hit by ransomware, and it was a smaller subsidiary, two to 3,000 people, but they lost a lot of content. But obviously, because of this, there was paranoia across the organization, and they wanted to roll out OneDrive. That was a central uh, decision because we had the feature Files Restore. So how many of you know what Files Restore is? So for folks who don't know, with Files Restore, if there is a mass accidental delete or you are hit by malicious uh, malware, you can go back in time and restore all your content to that point in time in the past 30 days. So it was a helpful measure um, for uh, that organization who was hit with ransomware. So what they did was they rolled out OneDrive and their communication to their end users was this is extremely secure, extremely safe, all your content would be backed up, protected, and files restore is there. If you're hit with ransomware, you can restore X, Y, Z. The two, 3,000 people who got actually hit by ransomware and felt the pain understood it and easily, quickly got onto OneDrive. The rest of them did not bother. They did not even know what ransomware is, so how do they understand why files restore is important? and they really, really faced a hard time with it. They went to the level that they locked their employees out of Outlook for two to three days so that they would use OneDrive and they made it a mandate. Till you don't use OneDrive, we are not going to let you access Outlook. So for two, three days, great active usage, but the minute they entered, they let them have access to Outlook, it was back. Attachments were being uh, shared by email, document uh, files were being saved to my documents. So it really did not make a difference. And then they reached out to us thinking, you know, we need some help with adoption. And we worked with them to understand, to make them understand and make their end users understand what is the problem that you're actually solving. Is there a user who is a mobile user? Can you tell them the functionalities of OneDrive that can help them be more productive in day-to-day -day life? Is there someone who is struggling with disk space or disk size? Can you talk about files on demand? Is there someone who is always on the road and needs to co-author or needs to work with people outside their organization and needs secure sharing? These are the kind of features and functionalities that they started pitching and they started pitching to different functions, which made more sense. So it made more sense for a marketing employee, it made more sense for a finance employee. And then with that campaign that they rolled out with the content that Matt will sh uh, show you soon, it was successful and they could gather the active usage that they wanted to. And then they eventually also rolled out known folder move so that anyone who still doesn't hear, listen to them and saves their files and folders on my documents, they have uh, compliance and security, even to those documents. So we all often get asked uh, that as Microsoft, can you provide some guidance as to what is healthy usage? How do we know after rolling out OneDrive that the usage that we are getting is healthy and we need not worry much about it? So internally, this is how we measure. We have realized that after 40% of active usage is when you really see the collaboration happening. So this is the threshold that you should aim for. 80% of retention or close to it is the most stickiest threshold of retention. And we do not measure uh, active usage on just on the files that have been uh, uploaded or created in OneDrive. 
we look at healthy usage. I'm sorry, active usage can still be measured with creation and upload. But healthy usage would be measured if people are actually sharing the files, if people are actually using the Office and OneDrive integration, and if they are actually using the different mobile scenarios like capture and annotation and editing on the go. And also if known folder move is being utilized. So how many of you know what known folder move is? Great. So for folks that don't know, known folder move is also very crucial to your adoption journey. And why so? Because it does not change the inherent behavior of your end users. So folks who want to save their documents to my documents or save uh, files to their desktop or pictures to my pictures, that is fine we can still redirect them to OneDrive so that you as IT has control over it and they as the end users have a lot of more productivity features brought to them in those files and folders with known folder move. And there are sessions that will help you understand more about it and how to deploy it. So please do attend those sessions or if you've already attended. Um, before moving on to success factors, we thought we will quickly demo the few of, few of these features that we just spoke about that can actually drive um, healthy usage. Can you shift to two? Sorry, yeah, two. So I will be. I'm beginning this demo with a Word document, which is on uh, my laptop. And why I'm doing that is. Uh, changing the inherent behavior of end users is difficult and mostly the inherent behavior is that users want to use uh, Word, Excel, PowerPoint on their desktop. They are still, they might not still be comfortable using it on web, but that's okay. Uh, with OneDrive and Office integration, everything that they can do on web, they can do in client as well, which is even co-authoring. So I've created a new document. I will quickly save it. I'll get a pop-up that I can save it in my OneDrive and I'll just rename it. I have saved the document. Now once the document is saved, all the productivity features that we just spoke about are now being brought into this document. So if I need help from Matt, all I need to do is at mention him and ask him to fill in this document further. I can also share this document directly from the client and I'll get all the wonderful options of the sharing links that I can select. This is my Microsoft account, so anyone is grayed out because that is not allowed within our organization, uh, but I can share it with people within my organization, which Matt is, um, and I will, oh, sorry, allow editing and apply, and, oops, sorry, and uh, share it with him. Now, similar to this um, experience is the experience that I have on web. And usually I start my day at office.com because this is a quick snapshot of every document and every file and folder that I'm working on. So or I do not really need to go to my OneDrive to create a new document or upload files from my uh, laptop. I can do it directly here. I can look at the files that have been recommended to me. So these can be files that I'm working on with my uh, colleagues or the files that need my attention. I can also look at uh, the, the recent files that I've worked with along with the activity of who has edited, who has commented, who has at mentioned me, files that have been shared with me or the files that are trending around me. And along with this, I can see all the recent files and folders and the sites that I'm following or I'm a part of. And similar to the desktop client, I can share a file directly from my web as well. And uh, this is my Contoso account, so I get access, I get the liberty to share it with anyone as well. Um, I can allow editing or make it view only, set an expiration date, set a password, and block download for further security purposes. And even if I use PowerPoint or, uh, one, uh, or uh, Word on the web, 
I have the same capabilities of at mentions and comments, editing, or sharing it on the go. And similar to web and desktop client, all these capabilities are also available on my mobile device. So I'll quickly shift to my mobile device. And if you see, if I'm traveling and I do not have my laptop or desktop with me, all these capabilities I can have directly in my mobile device. So if I need to look at the uh, presentation that I'm working on, or if I need to share, if I need to directly present from my uh, uh, mobile device, I can do that as well. And, uh, but the best thing about uh, my mobile device is the built-in scan functionality that comes in the OneDrive mobile app. With that, I can scan and digitize content on the go. So I will actually quickly take this because I do not have a document here. And I'll take an image of Matt's mouse pad and it has very nicely cropped the image and corrected the image. And because it supports multi-page scan, I'll take the other side of the image as well. And I can save it either directly to my files in OneDrive or I can save it as a part of um, a team site and add any metadata that I want to add which would be available to my team members to quickly access and uh, act upon it. So these are all the functionalities that are quick and easy to, uh, quick and easy to demonstrate to your end users and also can help you drive healthy usage. So based on what all don't work and what all didn't work with our clients, we finally recognize these four success factors that can help you drive a successful adoption, which is identifying stakeholders and scenarios, driving awareness and delivering training. And a lot of content has been produced by us that can help you, drive, uh, that can help you support all these success factors and they are available on aka.ms OneDrive adoption. And I'll hand it over to Matt now, who will take you through these scenarios and the content that we've produced. All right, great, thanks, Ankita, and hi, everyone. My name is Matt Wolodarski. Um, I'm a program manager in the OneDrive and SharePoint customer engineering org. My focus is on adoption and customer success. So as Ankita was mentioning, um, there is this built-in resistance that end users have when presented with change. How many were actually surprised with the stat of only 34% of end users are willing to use a new system? <laughs> high. It is, in some cases, it is, it is high. It can be kind of deflating, right? Um, that's the bad news. The good news is We've got these proven practices now. Microsoft has engaged with thousands of customers through Fast Track. We've done research. This isn't, um, you know, th there is industry uh, knowledge and theory in, uh, around this topic. So um, not only are these uh, a set of best practices that we're going to be sharing with you as we go through uh, this material, uh, but all the resources to help you put these best practices in place are available up on that uh, OneDrive adoption portal. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll show you some of those examples and how you can incorporate them um, into your campaign. So let's move forward here. Um, so we're gonna start by talking about stakeholders. Now, when you're thinking about building your project team, you're not gonna want it to be just yourself, right? Um, in addition to the horsepower to help you execute this end user adoption campaign, you're gonna wanna bring on people that have additional influence and credibility with the end users, the employees uh, that you're trying to reach in your organization. And so there's three key categories of stakeholders that you can see here, executive sponsors, success owners, and champions. That doesn't mean that there aren't other important roles to fill, like somebody to do the communication, somebody to do training. But what we find are these are really crucial roles, and so it makes sense to spend a little bit of time talking about them. Um, in some more detail. And let's start with executive sponsors. 
I think everyone, um, when rolling out an IT project, understands the importance of having an executive sponsor uh, sort of be the face of the program. Um, what we find typically uh, with our customers is that this is somebody senior within IT, whether it's the CIO or the CTO, and that's great. It's, it's important to have that, seat, that executive level sponsorship. But where I see some customers fall a little bit short is not leveraging that senior leader in IT and the relationships that they have across the business with leaders in HR, marketing, sales, or other lines of business to get them to participate um, and act as business sponsors. And why this is so important is because these business sponsors, they have the influence and credibility with their respective teams and their respective employees. Um, so as an example, it's a lot more effective if you have a VP of sales reach out to his global sales organization and tell them to use OneDrive because it's gonna save them all sorts of time when they work on proposals with their colleagues in the co-authoring capabilities of OneDrive and more broadly speaking, Office 365. So that with those time savings, uh, this person's team can spend a lot more time in front of the customer. So that goes a long way, uh, making the connection between what OneDrive can do and what matters to, um, in this case, the salespeople. So definitely take advantage of the business sponsors whom, from my experience, and I've worked with a number of customers over the last year on OneDrive adoption specifically, as long as you contain the ask to those business sponsors, so make it simple. As an example, maybe it's just giving them an email um, template uh, and having them do a little bit of customization and sending that out to their teams that directs them to how they can get started. Or giving them a few bullet points that they can bring up in a departmental town hall um, with a call to action as well. So with that proper positioning, I think you'll find that most business sponsors are willing to help out especially when they see the value of how OneDrive is gonna help their organization. Okay, so that's executive sponsors. Next are success owners. Um, as a baseline, a good way to think about success owners are as your project manager. But a success owner, what makes that a little more unique is going above and beyond the standard project management um, responsibilities. This is really the person who owns your organization realizing full value from OneDrive. So whatever the goals are that you've set for using OneDrive in your organization, this is the individual who's accountable for that. And a big part of that, of course, is gonna be driving end user adoption. And finally, last but certainly not least, are champions. Champions are the people in your organization that can help bring their colleagues along this change journey, this new way of working that OneDrive really represents. Um, what we found from, from our research is people like to learn from their peers. Um, it's one of the most used and uh, most effective way of learning, and it's pretty intuitive if you think about it. Um, if I'm gonna learn a new technology, I'm probably gonna look around and see who's close to me and who I trust um, and ask them to get started. Um, so the way to harness that, um, and these are also very credible people, they can put the technology in context of what that team does together. Um, the way to harness that champion uh, power is by putting together a formal champions program. So I just wanna dig into this a little bit more uh, because this is one of those adoption tactics that goes a really long way um, in terms of getting end users on board and um, adopting, in this case, OneDrive in a sustained manner. So in addition to uh, some of the activities that you see on the left-hand slide side of the slide for champions to do, um, there's other simple things. Um, champions uh, can host lunch and learns. Those are often very effective for their teams where they do some demos, they answer some questions. Um, they can also invite their colleague to work on a document that they've got up in OneDrive and then walk over to their desk and give them a quick 101 on how that works and why they should adopt this new way of, of working. I've seen some really effective champion programs. One in particular, um, you can see uh, the, the, the customer here is Mont McDonald. I wanted to share their story 
um, because A, they're one of our more successful Office 365 customers when it comes to adoption and business value realization, but they did something that was really unique and creative and an effective way to get people into their champions program. So they're a large engineering um, professional services firm. They're based out of the UK. And what Simon Denton, uh, who was an MVP, he's an MVP and he led the effort there. What he did was he attached a mentorship program to their champion program. What I mean by that specifically is he basically paired the Office 365 champions with a leader in the business, whether it was a practice lead or department lead. And obviously that is very enticing to a junior to mid-level manager to be able to have a mentorship relationship with somebody senior in the organization. So that becomes a really effective recruitment tool to get people across the business into your champions program. But it wasn't a one-way street, meaning the, the senior leader got a lot of value of having essentially a tech coach or an Office 365 coach who could help that leader use the technology more effectively um, to engage their team, to kind of orientate their team and, and, and get them all kind of rowing in the same direction towards the overall goals of the organization and making them all more productive. So definitely a win-win relationship. Now I know what you're probably thinking Matt, this sounds like a good program. It sounds like a really good program, but it also sounds like a lot of work. So I'm not gonna lie to you. There is work that needs to get done here. Um, but the way that I would look at it is for that effort, there is a bigger return on, on that investment. Um, we talked earlier about the research that shows this is the most effective way people like to learn. You're not gonna be able to along with your team, reach everyone in the organization. It's just not possible. So with an effective champions program, you now have a champion uh, or an army of champions who are now part of your team and an extension of you. And they'll be the ones who are in their departments doing the hand-to-hand -hand kind of combat to get people to adopt these tools. So the other consideration um, when um, should I or shouldn't I do a adoption or a champions program, is we have a number of resources to help you um, to do this more effectively and more efficiently. And so I'm gonna take you here to that OneDrive adoption portal. Remember this is at aka.ms WAC OneDrive adoption. It's nicely organized across those four key success factors that um, we framed essentially our presentation today because I'm interested in champions which fall under stakeholders. Um, I'm gonna uh, take a look at some of the resources here. You can hear from Simon, by the way, and listen to him describe some of the approaches he took with his champions program. Uh, but there's decks on best practices for champions program, also a template that you can use. I'm gonna show that to you. So this gives you some structure and some best practice considerations for building your own champions program. So take advantage of those resources to help you um, more quickly and more effectively get your champions program plan in place to begin executing. The other resource that I wanna point out to you is an Office 365 champions program. This is a program actually that's run by Microsoft. How many folks are familiar with this Microsoft run champions program? All right, just a few people, so um, it, I'm, very happy to be sharing it then with those who don't because this is a really hidden gem, I guess you could say, um, that Microsoft offers. Essentially, it's a program that we run to help enable your champions. So as you recruit champions, as you define what activities they're gonna do, obviously you need to help enable them um, to supplement those efforts. We run this champions program where I want you to send your champions to, to sign up, and they'll be part of an insider group. They'll get tips and tricks, emails, newsletters. They'll get uh, early releases. They'll be able to network with peers, other champions and other organizations around the world. So let us take some of that enablement load um, and, and help um, support your, your champions. Okay, moving on. Let's talk about scenarios. 
Um, I think everyone kind of gets what a scenario is, but very quickly to level set, uh, scenario is the way that you would describe how people in your organization can use OneDrive to address specific challenges they have or accomplish specific goals that matter to them. Scenarios are really important because they answer that crucial question that all of us ask when we are asked to change, and that is, what's in it for me? We quickly do the calculus, okay, am I gonna get something out of this in exchange for the effort that I have to put forward um, to modify my own behavior? And so scenarios are really the tool to answer that question of your end user when you ask them to now use OneDrive as part of their everyday, everyday work. Just to give you a sense of uh, a scenario that might be kind of relevant to all of us here today that came to Las Vegas. I'm assuming most of us flew here. Um, um, so we were on a plane. How did you spend your time on that plane? How many people did work? All right, probably a little bit less than a third. Uh, how many watched a movie or TV show? More hands going up. Okay, be proud like me. How many slept? <laughs> All right, okay. My sleeping journey was, I'm, I'm coming from Toronto. I sat down, we took off, I was out. Four and a half later, I woke up and we were on the ground. It's like I entered a vortex and um, I was all of a sudden in Las Vegas. So, um, how do we go about creating scenarios? Well, to support you, we've got a set of out of the box scenarios. On the left hand side, are a series of very general scenarios. These are things that are kind of the table stakes. They're gonna have broad appeal across your organization. Most people um, in your company, they need to secure um, and access their files from anywhere. They need to work with people inside and outside of the organization. So that's kind of good vanilla, if you will, scenarios. To go beyond that, we need to start to be more targeted and relevant with our messaging. So we do have um, additional scenarios uh, according to those, those four roles that you see there on the slide, finance, HR, marketing, and sales. To, I would kind of nudge you a little bit further. Please take advantage of these scenarios. We have a whole uh, scenario guide. I'll, I'll reference that in just a moment. But our most successful customers, they tend to define their own personas, meaning grouping, people in similar roles or similar work styles and habits. A role might be uh, people in your call center. Um, work habit groupings might be people who spend a lot of time on the road, salespeople, leaders. Those are uh, road warriors, right? So um, define those, those personas. Uh, you don't have to have a persona um, for every single person in the organization. Figure out what are the ones that are kind of big, big uh, populations. Um, so that you can really leverage your efforts accordingly. Um, as I mentioned, we have this OneDrive scenario guide. It's up on the adoption site. Um, it's got a lot of detail on those scenarios. You can take that messaging, bring it into your awareness and, and training efforts. Um, but I wanna share with you a little bit about how to create your own scenarios, because that's taking those personas. The next step is coming up with the right scenario. So this framework here, which by the way, is in an adoption playbook that's up on that site. It's one of the first resources that you'll see, and it um, goes beyond what we have in this deck, and it's really intended to cover A to Z, some uh, adoption best practices. But this framework here, the way that you would use it to create a scenario is, according to what team, what do they want to accomplish, how can they use OneDrive to do that more productively, and then how will they know whether or not that's been successful? So to just quickly walk you through an example, I'll, I'll use uh, myself here. Prior to ever joining Microsoft, I worked in consulting. I was a, uh, worked for a systems integrator, so I was a consultant. And I spent so much time, and I still have bad memories, um, and it can keep me up at night time, at some time if I keep thinking about it. Um, but my uh, bad memory is having to collect feedback um, from different stakeholders within the practice that I work. I created a lot of client deliverables, reports, proposals, and I needed to get input from like five or six different people, the partner, other consultants. So the way that I would do it in the past, and this was the mid-2000s, was I'd 
do a first draft, I craft an email, giving people a deadline, please send me your feedback, I'll collate it. And boy, did I collate it. I mean, countless, countless hours wasted taking all that feedback, um, reconciling where there's conflicting feedback between different people. Oh, don't even get me started on like version control. It was a mess. Now imagine today how if I, it was explained to me as a scenario, I could dramatically reduce my time spent there, do it in a much more cleaner and efficient way, using OneDrive, storing that document there, inviting those same reviewers to uh, co-author with me in real time with the document stored on OneDrive. That would have been huge. And how do I know I'm gonna be successful with this? Well, I'll spend a lot less time working in um, office apps and a lot more time in front of my customer and trying to come up with some insights that matter to, to them. So everything that we just talked about, um, you're gonna have your own set of metrics uh, to assess whether or not those scenarios are being realized, there's value coming from those. There's also a set of standard metrics, I have those on the left hand side. These are just some examples um, that we've seen other customers use to measure uh, their, the success of their end user adoption campaign. So obviously very basic, increased adoption. You know, this is where you can see the return you're generating from your efforts in investing in end user adoption. Um, but you wanna go beyond that. You want people not just to store their documents in OneDrive, you want them to collaborate. And so think about ways to measure, are we moving the needle in terms of improving collaboration? And you might look at the number of user files or number of users who have shared files. So, Consider those, everything that I've listed that's up there, all can be measured today using both uh, the reporting in the admin center, so the user activity report, the usage report that you can find in the OneDrive admin console. And then going beyond that is something called Microsoft 365 usage analytics. How many folks here are familiar with Microsoft 365 usage analytics? So about half the room. Quickly, for those of you that aren't, um, this is additional insights in how people in your organization are using Office 365. OneDrive would be one of those apps. Um, you basically bring your usage data into Power BI. You get a set of canned reports. You can come up with your own custom reports. Um, what I really love about it is how you can connect the attributes you know, around your company that are stored in Active Directory, so the department somebody's in, the region and attach that to the usage data so you can start tracking which departments, which regions are having good usage, what can I learn from them and those that have not so good usage, those would become prime candidates to circle back with and help them kind of cross to the next, the next level. Um, this can also be used as part of your awareness campaign. Uh, Accenture, which is one of our most successful OneDrive uh, customers, they've shared very publicly, they've got this great podcast how they used this kind of regional cut of usage data to create a leaderboard. And so they would use that to get different uh, leaders across these different regions to compete with one another. And um, it was for bragging rates at the end of the day, but you know, um, these regions would monitor this and make the push with their respective teams to um, sort of win this, this uh, adoption contest. All right, so we spoke about Stakeholders, scenarios. Scenarios, as we talked about, are critical for answering the what's in it for me. They're also really, really important to drive your awareness and training. And that's because this is what's going to entice your users to engage in your communications, to increase awareness, to generate excitement, as well as getting them hooked into your, your training. So we've got all sorts of materials covering these different tactics. The one thing to keep in mind is communications for a campaign like this is not a one-time thing. You're gonna wanna be doing a steady drumbeat of awareness through a teaser campaign, whether that's email templates, posting via SharePoint news, um, posters, excitement videos, email templates, you name it, we've got it. Um, and I'll show you some examples in just a moment. Um, at launch, a lot of customers do buzz events in the foyer or cafeteria where there's high traffic, setting up demo booths, enabling people to touch and feel the technology, answer questions, that sort of thing. And then finally, 
once you've launched or relaunched, if you're going back to kind of boost adoption, um, you need to sustain that communications, obviously. And the tips campaign is a great way to do that. Just communicate additional features and, and tips that people can use to be more productive with, with OneDrive. Let me just quickly show you some, some resources and where you can find these on that adoption site. So I'll just fast forward here to the awareness section. We do have a plan template that's pre-populated. You could just customize it to fit your requirements, but that would be a really good starting point, I would suggest. And then in the teaser campaign, you can see the templates for um, emails, posters. I'll show you a couple examples of those. Here's a countdown email template. So you can take this, put your logo on it, um, do some tweaking, and out, out it goes. Um, we have some uh, first day setup stuff for your launch or buzz event. In addition to a planning guide that you can use here, we've got some snackable videos. You can have these going in a loop in monitors throughout your office or maybe post this on your intranet. Um, so all sorts of good stuff here. Please take advantage of it. Um, and uh, let's uh, quickly move on here to talk about training. Much like end user awareness, this isn't a one-time thing. Um, you'll want to do training or offer training leading up to your launch. A lot of customers do this a couple weeks before, um, at time of launch and continue that. The question I often get when it comes to training is, what should I do? What training tactics or options should I use? Um, whether it's in classroom, um, should I do on demand? Should I do live on Teams, just provide quick start guides? And my answer is yes, yes, and yes. Um, you really do want to mix, and that's because people have different learning preferences. Um, uh, people have different levels of technical aptitude, and you'll want to consider your budget and geographic constraints when coming up with the training plan that makes the most sense for you. But to help you get started, I'm going to give a bit of a sneak peek here. Um, we're announcing this week the availability of a new training solution uh, called Microsoft 365 Learning Pathways. Uh, this was formally called, up until this week, Custom Learning for Office 365. How many folks here have, have heard of this solution? A couple? Any plans to, to adopt it? Okay. Well, maybe after, um, you might want to check this out. Essentially what Microsoft 365 Learning Pathways is, is it's this ready to implement, uh, up to date and easily customizable training portal. You can go to the SharePoint provisioning service. I would start with that URL. That'll take you to our docs pages where you'll get de more details about what it is and the instructions to install it, which would point you to that SharePoint provisioning service and this solution in particular. You would install it. It would take about 15 minutes. It's in your environment. You can customize it um, and then make it available to your end users and promote it with some of the um, uh, promotional email templates that, that we have. I'm not going to be able to go in detail today. Um, we do have a session tomorrow um, and we'll include a reference to it at the end of this deck. But I did want to um, just give you again a sneak peek or whet your appetite. Um, to hopefully want to come and, and learn more. So this is the solution. It's built on a SharePoint communication site, which gives us all the benefits of uh, SharePoint communication sites, beautiful design, responsive. It works on a phone. Um, there's web parts. We put some structure around the site. So this is a first run training site experience. And you would implement this, everything again that I'm showing you is what would be in your tenant once you've provisioned and gone through that process that typically takes about 15 minutes. The other thing to consider is we've got a few different pathways, learning paths, that's the name. We all learn differently. Um, some of us like to dive right in um, and just tell me the basics and I'll fill in the blanks as I go along. So for example, um, I'll take a look here at uh, starting with six simple steps. The, Content that you'll see throughout uh, these different playlists are a combination of articles and videos. The videos are designed to be very short and, and sweet. The beauty of leveraging a solution like this, 
And all the content that we're pulling in here is available on support.office.com if you're familiar with the Microsoft end user, end user training site. But the beauty of leveraging this is there's a whole team in, in the background that is testing this content continuously. They're doing research. They're learning what is effective training and what isn't. And that gets baked in ultimately to this training that you can bring into your own tenant um, with uh, Microsoft 365 Learning Pathways. So that's the, let, I want to get started quickly. Don't um, bore me with the details. For those who want to dip their toe in the water, um, or very nervous about dipping their toe in the water, shall I say, and want to go deep on a product before um, they'll feel comfortable uh, actually starting to use it, there's product-based training. So all the main apps and services of Office 365 are represented here. Um, I'll just show you for, for OneDrive. Um, I can watch a quick start uh, video and um, just consume that content and get up to speed and then feel comfortable starting to use the app directly. The very last um, learning path are scenarios. So we have scenario-based learning. We all know that we use Office 365 to get work done. We don't use it just for the sake of using a cool feature. Um, and so these scenarios have been designed to help show me as an end user, how I can complete tasks, like um, creating content with others. And so it walks me through that process, regardless of what app or service I'm using. So I was only able to go into it in a little bit. There is a whole admin section here um, that I won't be able to, to get into detail today. Um, but it allows me to show in high technology. I can create my own playlist. So if we don't want, or we don't have six simple steps, and we want three simple steps. I could build that with the Microsoft curated and always up to date training content with my own custom training content that I create and bring into this playlist. So very flexible, very customizable. We're really excited about it. There's been some great response already. A number of customers are planning and are rolling this out enterprise wide. Okay, thank you. Um, so just to wrap up here in terms of the training resources. Uh, Check out the training plan that's up on the adoption site. We actually have a training deck that you can use to train the trainers, train end users, as well as your help desk um, to further uh, kind of complement your, your training efforts. Um, as Ankita mentioned at the onset, we have a whole plan that is loaded and ready to go. All you have to do is customize this. Um, what uh, customers have been telling me that they really like about it is how we include the links to the resources that you'll need to execute each of those items. It's organized by work stream, and week by week, uh, you see what, at least as a starting point, we're recommending, and you can customize it, tweak it as you need, add owners, due dates, um, and use it even as a, a management tool to monitor status. All right, so I'm gonna throw it back to Ankita because um, I know we're running a little bit short, and she's going to walk you through some customer cases. So did you find that useful, helpful? <laughs> it's okay. It's been a long day, and there was a lot to consume, but uh, I would encourage you to take a look at the website, uh, and I would also reiterate that all the content that Matt showed is not just Matt and I and our team members sitting in Redmond building the content. It, ha it is a product of a lot of customer interactions being tested by a lot of multinational companies who have rolled it out, given us feedback, and this is the final product. And few of them who have used, um, I'm going to talk about them. The first one being Chevron. So Chevron, I mean, I don't need to introduce this customer. Huge customer, 50, 52,000 users um, all across the world, 162 countries. And they had a combination of file shares and home drives and few other competitive uh, products, with shadow IT kind of scenario. They want to centralize all of it under OneDrive. Um, their approach was extremely bold and unique. What they did was a dual-pronged approach. Uh, few of the critical accounts, they used Microsoft FastTrack to uh, migrate to OneDrive. 
And the rest of the accounts and the majority of the accounts, they left it to their end users, self-migration. We have the tool, but then they made that bold, uh, effort, uh, bold call that let the end users decide what they want to take with them, what they want to migrate, how, uh, and uh, get comfortable with the tool. The only thing they did was gave them a deadline that by XYZ date, uh, you will not have access to your file shares, home drives, or any other uh, apps that you used. But along with doing this, so wh when they first told me this, I genuinely got scared. And I was like, then you must have got a lot of uh, escalations, right? And IT must, be, uh, ha must have transformed into a help desk uh, um, avatar. But they said no, it was minimal IT involvement. Because what they did was have a very strong champions program. So everything that Matt mentioned, is actually what they exactly did. And their uh, story is uh, a public story. It's on customers.evidence. And when you read it, you will realize that we've interviewed a person whose title is productivity champion. I actually thought it is he was kidding and he just made it up to make me feel good. But that was his actual title. He was productivity champion. And his job was just to evangelize the product. And he met with end users all across the globe. So he traveled to London. And I, and I asked him, so how did you interact? So when, when he traveled to London, he held a session with the marketing employees. And he did not have presentations or anything. He just sprung up his laptop and he started co-authoring with people back in the US. And that, he said, he you know tried to align it to how the guys sitting in that room would work. Then he reached out to customers and his team members reached out to uh, end users who were having disk issues and uh, not much storage space. And they were okay with file shares and were worried if OneDrive would provide that much of uh, storage capacity XYZ. So then they spoke to them about files on demand. And he demoed files on demand and he showed how you can have everything with you, access everything, but everything would be in the cloud. And he has a very interesting line that when end users saw this and uh, realized that OneDrive was much more, and uh, the the res when their response was, where has this been all my life, it was his most uh, uh, exciting moment. And it's actually documented. I'm not making it up. So this was a great story. And uh, they've also told us how, um, uh, how they enabled their employees to get comfortable. They, had, uh, they leveraged all the videos that are on support.microsoft.com uh, support that Matt showed. But knowing their user profile, they also built their own uh, snackable videos. And they had uh, success stories and vignettes that how they, how, uh, the peer, uh, their peers were, uh, were using OneDrive. So they had all of this available for their end users. And it was all what the end users did. They just made sure that they were there to support them. But this is how they actually carried it out. So pretty impressive. The second one I wanted to talk about is Cox Autom Automotive. Now, this was one of our compete customers. Their environment was a combination of Slack and Box, and they moved to Teams and OneDrive. And when they moved to Teams and OneDrive, they had their own storyline, and which was two words, connected revolution. That is how they described it to their end users. And the usage scenario that they uh, led with was having all your conversations and files in one place. And it was not the IT who was doing it. In town halls, or in all hands, or at launch events, they had their executive sponsors actually talk about it. And it's again documented that when they positioned uh, this uh, value proposition of having your conversation and files in one place, it really resonated with the CXOs and the superiors. So when the leadership team started using it and liking it, and they started talking about it 
to uh, the employees, it again resonated. And they also leveraged known folder move while they were refreshing 17,000 devices. Again, making sure that the end users understood that next time you lose your device or we have to refresh your device, we will not bug you that please take the backup, please make sure this is secure, please make sure you have your C drive clean. All you need to do is move your documents to uh, known folder move and every time you get a new device all your content would be available so again led with usage scenarios led with champion program uh, champions and executive sponsorship and finally I have Autodesk um, who again is our partner and our customer and when I spoke to the CIO the only thing he said that the seamless adoption was possible only because their IT team sat down and made sure that they had deep understanding to all the user profiles and their needs. And all of this planning was done in parallel to deployment planning. So everything they did was planned much, much in advance, all the strategies, all the accountabilities. And it helped them to have a very successful deployment and adoption. So that is it from our side. The next steps are uh, please go to the website that we showed you, download the adoption plan, recruit the right stakeholders, and build and execute the uh, training plan or uh, the co communication plan. I would also request you to go to any of the AKMS. Uh, uh, my, uh, AKMS links uh, that can help you uh, look at the resources that would be helpful for deployment and adoption or follow our blog for latest product news or give us feedback on uh, how to make our products better. This is a new track that we added after a lot of feedback that we received last Ignite. So your feedback for this track would be really helpful and really encouraged so that we can make this track even better the next time we meet you guys. So thank you all for joining and have a great evening.